In today's video, we're talking about the Premier Pro CC18 exam, and we're looking at the domain called Organizing Video Projects. Subdomain 3.1 says, Use the timeline panel to manage video and audio tracks. Part A of this subdomain is, Use the timeline panel to manage tracks. I have my timeline panel selected, and what I'm going to do is hit the tilde key on my keyboard to make this a full screen panel. On the right hand side, I can see that I have five video tracks and I also have five audio tracks. My video tracks are labeled with a V and my audio tracks are labeled with an A. For the most part, I'm using all of my video and audio tracks and I'm not limited to the audio and video tracks that I have in this timeline. I can actually add or delete tracks. All I have to do is right click on any of the video or audio tracks and then I have options from there such as add a track. I can delete the track. Over here I have add tracks or delete tracks. I'm going to go ahead and click on add tracks, which brings open this window. I have the option of adding multiple video tracks and I can tell Premiere Pro where to place those tracks. Maybe I don't want it after video track five. I can put it maybe after one or two. I have the same options with my audio tracks. I can add multiple tracks. I can tell Premiere Pro where to place those tracks and then I can change it from standard. Maybe I want mono for those tracks. I can just click and change that easily. And then I have a few options for submix tracks. I don't actually need to add anything here, so I'll hit cancel. If I look at my audio and my video tracks, some of them are wider than the other tracks in this timeline. There are a few ways to expand or close a track. If I put my cursor between video track one and two, my cursor changes just a little bit, and I have the option of clicking and dragging that. I can also double click between a track, and it will open up wide. It'll also give me some options at the bottom. Same thing with my audio tracks. If I wanted to add more features to either my video or my audio tracks, if I right click and go to customize, a button editor appears, and then I can actually click and drag some of these down into the track. We'll click cancel. Widening a track for a video allows me to see a thumbnail for the video track. And with my audio track, it actually lets me see the waveforms a little bit better. If I zoom in on my timeline, I can see the audio form just a little bit better. And I can actually open this up even wider if I'd like. I'll hit the tilde key to go back to my normal Premiere Pro screen. Part B of this subdomain says manage sequences in a complex project. I feel like this point is kind of broad, so we're going to look at it from a couple of different ways. Of course, they might be meaning something completely different. If you have any ideas on what they're talking about, go ahead and leave a comment below. You might be able to help somebody else that's watching this video. So if we look at my timeline, I have some yellow, I have some red and other projects. You might see green on the timeline. What this is referring to is the ability for Premiere Pro to be able to play this. The red will mean it's more complex and it might not show here in the program monitor very well. It might be pixelated. It might skip. It might not display essential graphics or some other things that we have going on. Something that we can do to help that out is we can render out the timeline or portions of the timeline. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit I on my keyboard to set an endpoint and we'll go to about here. I'll hit O on my keyboard. From here, if I go to sequence, I have some render settings. I can render effects in to out by clicking on this, or I can click render in to out. I can render selection and render audio. What this will do is help process some of the video file. It'll help Premiere Pro to be able to play this a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and click render effects in to out. It's gonna take some time. I'll go ahead and speed through that for you so you don't have to wait. Now that that's done, we can see that my timeline has changed where parts of my timeline were red are now green. Some of it changed to yellow. Some of it stayed yellow, but the timeline should be able to play better now as a result. Something else that I can see this point of the subdomain meaning is in my project panel, I have three sequences and if I select them all, if I click and drag them onto the new item. I now have a brand new sequence, which took the name of my original sequence. So we can just change this and call this all sequences. I know very original and the name updated. And if we look, our timeline's just a little bit different. It's green. 
the great thing about doing what we've done is if I go to my version one sequence and I make some changes, maybe I see all this space that shouldn't be there and I bring that to the front, maybe split this here and I do this and I make a bunch of other changes. I add an adjustment layer. I do some other things. If I go back to my all sequences, this sequence has now been updated with the changes that were made here. And so this could be a better way of making your main sequence than doing what I've done in my original sequence, doing everything in one place. Some other things that I could see for this, and I don't want to waste time covering it because this video will get too long, but doing a multi-camera sequence. A multi-cam sequence would be if you maybe had two cameras shooting the same thing from two different angles and then just be able to cut your footage based upon the two sequences. Another thing I could see is recording maybe with a webcam or a video camera, but having a secondary audio that you need to sync up. I could demonstrate some of those things, but again, I just don't want to waste too much video time on a domain that I feel like is too broad and end up covering a 100 things that maybe you won't even see. I'm going to combine part C of the subdomain, work with multiple layers, and E, recognize the different types of layers in the layers panel together because they fit. Within my timeline, I have quite a few things going on. Let me collapse my video track. Let me collapse my audio track. We can see we really have a lot of things going on. Let me zoom in so we can see this a little bit better. I have multiple audio tracks. I have my video track here, which is blue or maybe a bluish purple. I have an adjustment layer above my video track, which I used to try and do some color correct. I'm not great when it comes to color correction but that pink section is an adjustment layer. This right here is a lower third that I have that's actually an essential graphics. Same thing here, this pink section is essential graphics. This right here is actually a graphic. This is another EO clip that I had. This is another adjustment layer, which is a blur. And then I have a JPEG. And on top of that, I actually have text. So for this, I have some assets in my project panel. I created some new items using adjustment layers. And once I've created those, all I did was I just clicked and dragged them onto the timeline. For stills, I have a couple of images. And all I did was click and drag those onto the timeline. Under screen captures is where I had that Premiere Pro exam page. And notice that when I click and drag this, it's actually going to create a brand new audio and video track. When I let go, now I have a sixth one and I, they added a new track here. And all I've done is just stacked different objects on top of each other. Now that I've brought all of these things together, it's really a lot to look at. Something that I could do is merge. So let me scroll back out on my timeline and I'm actually just gonna select all of this stuff. Just clicking and dragging with the marquee selection tool. And if I right click on this selection, I can click on nest. I can give the nested sequence a name and click OK. And now all of that's been collapsed. It's green like what we did previous by putting a bunch of sequences into one sequence. For those of you watching, you might wonder, uh, what do I do now? What if I needed to make an adjustment to one of those adjustment layers or I need to delete one of the pictures? I can actually just double click in the nested part of the sequence and it just opened up everything that I've done in a brand new sequence section. And so I can change, I can delete, I can add. And then when I'm done, I can go back and it will update here in the nested sequence. A benefit of nesting different things in Premiere Pro is sometimes Premiere has a hard time rendering and processing different effects and video clips that are going on in a sequence and nesting it together will help Premiere Pro work with what you've done. 